This way to get pigs from A to B. Drones. <laughs> hey, how's it going? And welcome back to the series about rails. Now in the last few episodes we have been working on the bypass and the rail system. In this episode we might take a little bit of a break. And I've had a brilliant idea. So, let's get started. Okay, so we're here at Spawn where there's a little bit of green area and I thought, great place to do this. And as you can see in front of me, I have two pins, one over here which is quite small and one over here which we want to grab all the pigs from over there, pick them up and move them over to that pin. And you know what pigs are like, you got to try and coerce them across or build them from a fence. And I thought in this episode what we're actually going to be working on is getting some form of drone script to work. But I thought I'd also show a way of testing out your code without having to constantly replace the E problems. So as you see I've got a creative case here. Normally of course we wouldn't be using creative cases but we're just here with we're just testing things out. Uh, and it's screen and we've got an electronic assembly over there and a slime over there which is going to make a lot of noise. Uh, but what we're going to do is we are going to jump into here and we're going to make a new script. This is a copy of Fingercomp's NetFlash program, which is really cool for exactly what we want to do right now, which is testing things. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to call it pbars.lua and we'll grab the code, stick it in there. Uh, I have made one small modification to this code though for my testing purposes. Uh, besides, of course, adding a comment there so you guys can find the, the link to where it is. Of course, you can just look on in the description down below and this code will also be linked there. But the code change I have made, I've added in this line here. You can see that they define the address up the top here. And this is the address of the master controller that will be sending all the commands. Now, because... I don't always know what the master is going to be. I thought I'm just going to remove the security requirement on that and just make it check for it. So every time it gets a a new message uh, saying it's an EEPROM, it just sets the address to that. And then it can respond to that address as a response. So of course this does allow anybody to control your drones, but it's still a really good way of testing things and you can always put the line and re change this back to what it was just for a little security uh, or you can put a password on it if you want to modify the code but really what this does is we are going to stick this into our EEPROM so we'll just go over to here of course take out our EEPROM from here stick that guy in there we'll go flash pbios we'll hit enter so we'll tell us to insert it I always seem to do that first but oh well uh, we'll go yes because we're ready. Do not turn off the computer. Uh, and we'll call this PBIOS. PBIOS. Uh, just so it's labeled. We'll then switch, of course, the BIOS out, which is now called PBIOS. Put the old one back in. Uh, and we will stick into here our drone component. So you can see I've already set up a drone in here. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to stick our inside in here. Yeah. For what I'm planning, we're going to need a navigation upgrade, a, a leash upgrade, some a memory, a CPU, and for some reason this is the maximum level of uh, tier CPU you could put into these guys, even though it's a tier 2 drone because of the navigation upgrade. Put a tier 1 in there, we'll put a wireless network card in here, we could put a linked card in here as well, but that's a lot of power we don't want to use, so we'll put that into there. And we'll put up our new BIOS into there. We will compile this guy. Because we're in creative, it just gives it to us straight away. Take it out here. What's this guy called? Okay. Uh, and we can put this guy down. Um, put him down there for now. And we'll turn them on. Power on. We'll go over to here. And then on top of this... Uh, did I? No, good. So we'll go net flash, actually net flash dot lower. 
grab the other half of the code which runs on this computer. Paste it into here. A little more complicated, but you can go through and read this. The only thing I've really changed is I added the comment at the top. But you can grab this code down in the description and of course I'll put the link in there as well for you guys. And what we do is we just run net flash. That gives a whole bunch of options. Cool. Uh, if we go like this though, we'll go, we'll call it pigs for now. And we'll go computer adopt beep. Break, break it. Save it. Exit. And normally of course if we were to run that, it would error out because we are not running on a EEPROM and we'd have to reflash the BIOS and then it would it would beep once and the error and stuff like that. But what we can actually do now is we can go net flash pigs. And you can hear something beeped, which is actually the drone behind us beeping. So you can also make it return things. So if we go pigs again. We can go drone.move zero and we'll go up five zero and we can also go return okay we'll then go like that we'll run our net flash again and we'll return okay because that's the message we sent but if we look around here the drone has gone because it's now up there so that's a really cool way of testing your code without having to reflash and I'm really happy that Fingercomp has actually written this code because it makes it so much easier for debugging. Now what I'm going to do though is in order to get the code to work, I'm going to have to do a little bit of debugging on the drone and get some stuff to work. So back in a moment. Okay, so the code should be working now. It's all ready and all written up. Now what we're going to do to get this to actually work is I'm going to use waypoints. Now if you remember in the... Qantas episode where I first featured drones. I used someone else's code for doing farming and they had all the waypoint stuff set up. So I copied some of their code to work out this and get things working. Worked really well. I've modified the course, but of course we're going to need to have some waypoints. So I'm going to put a waypoint in here and mix the pigs that we currently got. Stick it in there. We're going to head on here and call this pigs. And then of course the Drone can find where the spot is. We're going to go over here and place down another one in the middle of here. And we'll call this this one here pin. Because that's where we want things to go to. And we'll go all the way over to here. And I'm going to place down a charger somewhere. Where can we put a charger? Probably about here and we'll put a waypoint next to it somehow um, maybe there and of course we need to grab ourselves a our wrench one thing I forgot to grab uh, a wrench to turn that guy on so he's always charged oh, that's not the waypoint that guy there is and we'll call this guy charger so now, of course, we've got our three waypoints. We've got our charger, which we're going to send our drone back to to charge things on. We've got our pig pen over there, and we've got the location we're going to there. So if my code works correctly, and of course, we've got the drone, which is sitting up there, still running the same code, we can go into here. We can run uh, net, re net flash pigs. And hopefully what will happen is he'll detect... There you go, so he's running the code. He'll drop down here, charge himself up, then go over to the pig pen, fly quite high above them, slowly drop down. He sits there for a little bit, unleashes the leash, and if he finds a pig, which he has, look, flying pig, pulls it over here, takes it over there, and hopefully goes down really slowly and places the pig down nice. Well, that's not what I was expecting. Okay. And then, of course, returns back to the, to the charger. So, most of that code works. Great. Awesome. Uh, what we do need to do, of course, is we need to set this up so it doesn't do that. 
we could slow down the speed. So let's go into here. We'll change the pig's code. So this is actually the code here. Uh, we set our, our leash up, our navigation upgrade in there. Uh, this is the code that I kind of copied from the farming up farming program. I uh, have modified it slightly, so we've got our charger, our pigs, and our pen. And we don't do a loop for all the various different farms, but pretty much the same code applies there. Uh, the move is very similar as well, uh, except for we added an acceleration in here. Uh, otherwise, we are pretty much copying what was there. Uh, and then we run a course, get waypoints, beep! We will be moved to the charger. So we're just doing a very basic command. We're not, we're not even looping for it. We're going to move to the charger position. We're going to go to 100 acceleration if we can. Uh, we're going to then move to the pig pen. Right about 10 blocks above it. We then want to drop down into there. So that avoids us hitting any fence posts or anything else that might happen. If we actually pick up something in the bottom position. Then we'll move above the pig pen 15. Beep again to say, hey, we picked something up. Uh, we'll move across to the, uh, the, the pen itself uh, at 20 blocks high. And then we will slowly move. And you can see this guy here is going at 100, uh, which is the speed at which we're doing it. So what I'm thinking we might do is we'll change this down to 0.1, because it looks like 1's not even slow enough to go down. Uh, and then once we get down to that point, we unleash. We wait a little bit of time to make sure the leash is actually disconnected. And then we we'll return back to the uh, the charger. So let's give this one a go and see if it fixes the problem. Off he goes. Down he goes. Got himself a pig. Should go really slowly now. Yep. Might be a bit slow, but we'll see if this helps any. Okay. Really, this, this shouldn't cause a problem because it's just going so slowly. Okay. Still died. Okay, well. We, what we might do, let's go over here and move this slightly. So we'll move this down one. So we'll grab... <sighs> we will grab this, we'll put the waypoint one down, and it was called pin. Uh, we will take out an area and grab ourselves some water. Because we all know Minecraft water stops any fall damage. Do that. That so now, if we try it, it should mean there's no fall damage at all. Go again, jump up to here and have a look so you can hear him beeping. Off he goes. Picks up a pig all the way over here. Probably don't need to go down as slowly anymore. Of course, while this program is running, we can't change it. Well, we can change it, can't we? So let's uh, go back here. We can cancel this. Let's go into pigs. We can change all the way back down here. Change this back to. We could probably do it quite fast now. Let's go. Let's go five. Did he make it down? Has he come back yet? Don't see him. Oh, there we go. He's, back. He's eating back now. So, did the pig make it in? It did. Look, we've got a pig. Yes, we've got one pig stored there. Cool. We just try that code again. Off he goes. Picks up a pig. Wow, that's a big bouncy pig. 
should be able to go down. Ooh, not be a bit faster. Okay, cool. We actually managed to make it. Awesome. Very cool. And of course, a return. So what we could do now is we could put a wall loop on there. And while you can pick up pigs, we'll take them across. Go back. Pick up some more. Bring them back. Okay, so. There you go. We can now move pigs from one pen to another. It was something different. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to end the episode here. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like and a comment. Tell me what you liked about it. If you're new to the channel and you like open computers, Railcraft, or any of that sort of stuff, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But otherwise, have a great day, and see ya!